Alright, so now I gotta figure out this sill. Yeah, I got some facts here, okay? Here's a fact. This thing here, this has been taking on water still for a long time. You know, lesson number one, you know, don't have your sprinklers. You know, I mean, I don't think they do, but don't put it past people, you know. Anyway, so you gotta, I'm gonna have to dig all this out. Here, take this guy off. This guy, it feels very solidly attached. And I'm wondering you know, if they like put, you know, tap cons or something into these bricks. Anyway, so the wood is solid. So I don't know. I mean, I would like to use it, but you know, I don't know how that's going to happen. So. Let's see if I can figure out how this thing is attached and get it off of here, huh? Well, here's something interesting. And you see this? This is the nail sticking through. I just pulled this piece out from right here up underneath this thing, that brick mold in there, okay? You know, and I'm assuming this was a piece that went from brick all the way to brick, okay? Um, but you see this old paint here? Okay. This paint that was here before this uh, secondary sill here. So I'm wondering if this, this sill is even necessary. Shoot, I might be able to take this, retrim it, and install it up underneath there like it's supposed to be. You know, because you're supposed to have, you know, the, you know, the sash is going to cover and water is going to hit the sash and run down. And, you know, and if it slopes uphill, it's harder for the water to, to run uphill. Um, anyway, I mean, right now the way it's set up is, I mean, you can, this is actually, this, this sill is actually lower than this sill. So you've got a pocket here where water is able to just get in. So we'll see what, what happens. So we got a, the saga continues. We got more liquid nails holding it down. So I got to currently prying it up, trying to get out. I mean, you can see it. I mean, it's it's moving. So it'll it'll be a second before I get this thing all the way off. But I don't think I'm gonna be able to reuse it. Maybe, I don't know, there's like some rot under here, you know, that I'm having to uh, contend with, so. All right, so I got it up and you can see where the liquid nails was. All of this moisture is trapped right here in the brick, so. I have to let that dry out a little bit before I, I think, put something else on there. You know, when let, who knows how much water has gotten in there. So, let me see. It's off. Okay, so it's gone. As you can see, this it wasn't liquid nails per se, but it did a good job of sticking, that's for sure. Now you can see where it was, you know, it, it did the sealing job, so. I'm gonna take this guy out so that it can be continuous all the way through. And who knows, I mean, I might be able to use this guy if it dries out, you know, we'll see. Yeah, that sill that was put out here hanging over this brick, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they put it there because there's this crack here. Okay, that's, I can understand that. But I mean, look at the, look what the water trap did the water trap you know it siphoned all the water into that crack that was there and just really rotted the rest of this thing out you know it kind of did me a service like it's easier to take out um but here's one of the things that i look for you know is is evidence of you know what was here previously right I mean, you can see the paint kind of flaking off you know this was painted at one time so 
that tells me put the sill back the way that it was let the water run off the brick life will be good okay um we can seal the brick we can seal the you know seal the wood and it will it will be good i mean but that what you gotta do i mean you gotta eliminate water traps i mean look at that that's uh that's that's what you know that solution that i just removed did it, it accelerated the decay instead of staving it off so so we're going to put that sill back here and um and continue the slope I, have, I, I do gotta let this dry though so you don't want to it's got fungal spores all in there so i'm sure you don't want that fungus to continue, so maybe we'll put some killer on there too. That's what we'll do. One thing I'd like to point out, um, I'm pulling the sill out. Now there's, there's still some, some good wood in here. I'm not sure if this is pine or cypress. I'm, I feel like it might be cypress. It's a little lightweight, but it's still tough and resilient. I'm trying to pull it out. Um, but one of the things that, I mean, you need to know is that, I mean, even the best wood, I mean, if you've got historic old growth heart pine or, or old growth cypress or whatever, it's no match just for, you know, just day in, day out, moisture, fungal activity and rot. I mean, it'll, even the best woods will, will meet their demise you know if you know, proper protections water drainage all those types of things aren't thought of so anyway but you can see i mean it's got a little bit left here it's good not much but oh here's what's interesting you got the most that's good right here this is where the two sills you know, this connecting sill was, they were flush. So water could run off of this, okay? Over here, the sill was raised up a little bit, created a little pond, a little water trap where water could get in and just soak and soak and soak. So it just tore it up all the way down. Building science, gotta understand the building science that emerged over thousands of freaking years. Oh, I said frickin' F-R-I-C-K-I-N, just for clarification. So I'm able to get these pieces of sill out. You know, first started, I tried to drill all the way through it, but man, I wasn't going all the way through. But I want you to look at this grain, man. This is a piece of old growth cypress. You know, look at that, look how tight the grain is. This was the best piece of wood that could have been in here, but it still didn't stand a chance against um, a lack of understanding of building science and trapping water against it. Because even the, the best piece of cypress here, um, not protected properly or not given the proper chance to survive, you know, nature's gonna take it back. That's what happened here. I'm able to just get in here and saw I had I saw Zod between the stool and the sill cut all those nails and now I'm I'm working on you know piecing these piece, piecing this out here I'll, I'll cut it in sections and you know pull it out yeah man just pulled this guy out from in there that was a nice piece of wood very nice the kind that you would like to have okay. see inside there I got some old conduit I don't know how old that is but back in there you can see that's got the pressure treated 2x4 in there somebody to repair sometime hmm. oh and a little bit of blood no project happens without at least a little bit of blood. 
got to have a little sacrifice. Okay, so, ah, there we go. We've got that old sill all the way out. And what it reminds me of is the days of my first job ever, which was um, foundation repair, where you had to crawl up underneath the house and you know change out posts and things like that. Well, oftentimes you had to rebuild the structure of the house from underneath the house and changing out four by six beams, four by eight beams, big old timbers underneath the house crawling around. I mean, this is not crawling around, but the principle is the same is that the entire window is built upon and sits on the window sill. So the sill goes first and everything kind of goes up from that. I mean, even <laughs> sill, I mean, maybe, maybe the word sill means, I don't know the bottom. I don't know what sill means, but you know, you've got a sill, you've got sill plates, you've got, you've got sill beams, you've got all kinds of sills type stuff, but that's the foundation right there. And so we're going to put the foundation back the way it's supposed to be. And, um, you know, but I'm going to do that after lunch. It's lunchtime now. Also hanging out with me here. You can't even see it, but somewhere in there. Oh, it's a spider. See my little spider in there? Oh, that's pretty cool. Hanging out.